Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So this week we're going to be re-waxing the chain on this Orbea. We're also going to be fitting new handlebars which will involve bleeding the brakes on this SRAM ETAP and our thought processes around all these procedures. So this is an Orbea Orca. I actually have a soft spot for Orbea because my first time trial bike was an Orbea and I do love these bikes so I enjoy doing this one. But as you can see here, the first thing we do is to put the chain in boiling water because that melts the wax, the old residue of wax that's on the chain. You've got to remember this chain's got no oil on it, so it's not going to need degreasers, but you have to remove that wax in some way. And the way I do that is with boiling water. So once that's sitting in there simmering away, I leave that while I'm doing these other jobs. I just brush off and clean off the residue of wax that is left on the derailleurs. This is, uh, I mean, this bike is lovely. It's SRAM ETAP and uh, without an oil chain, that, that chain set and drive train will remain spotlessly clean for a long while. So now I just brush off this cassette. As you can see, when I turn this slightly sideways to the light, you see the way the light is going right the way through that cassette. That's because that cassette is built up no dirt or mud because it isn't oiled. This is the beauty of chain waxing and the way it can help keep your drive trains so clean. So now you can see how that wax has poured out, come out of all those little rollers in the chain and how that now is lifted out and we can just wipe that down now with a rag and that's ready to re-wax. So that's what I'm just doing here, just cleaning any residue off with the, with the microfiber towel and then that goes straight into fresh wax and you can see we use the molten speed wax and you can see how that bubbles away, that's all the little air coming out of the rollers and any leftover water from the, the waxing process. So that's now waxed and absolutely ready to go. So break down that wax now before I actually dust this and the cassette with molten speed powder. It just gives a nice finish. It just sort of finishes off what I'm doing and presents the chain well, but it's also supposed to be useful for a few extra watts on your cycling. Helps with the gear shifting and everything else. So it's really worth doing the molten speed powder as well. We do that free anyway when we wax the chain. So next up we just give everything a clean off because again it gives me that tactile feel of the wheel. I can just check everything as I'm doing that. A little bit of brake cleaner on this disc. You can see there the residue on the brand new microfiber towel there that we used. You can just see it's just the residue. But because I cleaned it I noticed that these preloaders on the bearings were loose. So I just tightened those up first before I put the cassette back on. And so I now know that that wheel is, is spot on and ready to go back on the bike. So we just do up this cassette, torque that off to the correct torque setting, and then we're beginning to figure out the handlebars and changing those over for the new one. So off comes the bar tape, because obviously we've got to remove those brake levers. And when I, when I did this, I actually removed the brake levers, but I left them connected to the brake hoses to avoid any dripping of the dot fluid. SRAM ETAP like this is a little bit more cautious on, you have to reuse the right dot brake fluid and so you don't want that dripping all over the bike. Now one thing I did notice here was how tight these stem bolts the, on the head here were. They were really tight, way over torque. You can almost crush your handlebars, you, you know, if they're cut. I mean these carbon they could quite easily crush and break so you must torque these up to the correct setting. But whoever fitted those, they were way too tight. So he did risk the risk of damaging his handlebars. So we put on the new handlebars, these are slightly more aero and I have to actually bring the brake pipes through the handlebar on these ones so that's why I needed to bleed these off. So we take these little olives off the end, they're not reusable so we bin those, we put on a fresh olive on the end there. So we've now feathered that through, on goes a little fresh olive and barb here, they're specific to SRAM. Like I say it's a little bit more finicky the SRAM ETAP than perhaps some Shimano systems. So we just have to use all the right fittings on the ends which we've got there and then just tighten those up and then we can bleed these brakes off. Again with bleeding these off you need the right fittings for the, for the caliper end and the correct syringes and everything else. You want to make sure 100% that you're ready to bleed before you start on these because like I say it's dot fluid, it's not mineral oil so that can actually damage paintworks and finishes on the bike. So you want the minimal amount of mess effectively when you're doing this. So you can see as I put on the fittings I wipe them off, make sure that we keep that to an absolute minimum and then we're just using here the syringe system as recommended by the manufacturers to get fresh fluid in there. Obviously we had very little air in there the way we'd done the removal so all we were effectively doing was pushing through the fluid to make sure there was no air at the end so it wasn't a, a lengthy procedure to 
get these bled up. Now I always just put, you know, so I just put a little bit of cob slip on the end of the brake. That's a heat resistant grease and that will stop the piston sticking to the back of the pads at any point. So that's why I do that there. You would do that on car brakes as well. So that's, the, you know, a good little practice there to stop any future proof, you know, problems coming along. And then we just rebar tape up here on the new handlebars new bar ends in and this is all beginning to come together nicely wipe down the bikes again so as I can just check the bike as I'm doing that just make sure everything feels okay just run my hands over things as I'm doing it and I just just make sure everything's right and that's a nice procedure to do to clean up a bike especially when you're servicing it anyway but it does give you a feel anyway this week we are thrilled we've crunched some numbers on the channel this week we've had great growth and we're over the moon we've had a uh, best week so far for subscribers We've broke milestone after milestone this week, so thanks very much for all that. As you can see, we're just adjusting up the derailleur here, and I mean, these, these SRAM Force chains, they are lovely. They are the best looking chain on the market at the moment. The way they're curved one side and flat, they give that flat illusion on the top edges. Thoroughly love those chains. So uh, like I say, this bike ticked a lot of boxes for me. Being an Orbea, having ETAP, having that SRAM chain, it's just, <laughs> this was lovely. So you can see I'm just glancing over it now with a torque wrench, checking all the torque settings, making sure everything on this bike is correct and as it should be, even down to the bottle cages, you know, we check everything, pump up the tires so this bike is now spot on. And I know when this bike goes out that this bike is absolutely ready to ride the miles on. And as you can see, how beautiful it looks. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again next week. Take care.